This is the Action Movie Guys podcast, bringing you action movie reviews from across the decades, plus box office numbers and insight like never before. And now, your hosts of the Action Movie Guys podcast, Alex and Nate. Welcome everyone to a brand new episode of the Action Movie Guys podcast, episode 305. We're starting a brand new franchise. We're going to start off with my man Mel Gibson and his, I guess, legendary character, right? Yeah. Mad like Max, that. a little post-apocalyptic film called Mad Max from 1979. I'm your host, Alex Figueroa. My co-host is... Nate from Netflix Reviews. All right, Nate. I, most likely the last time you've seen this is when we did the 4K review, right? I mean, but yes. other than that, that was when the was the time. last time? Then... That was it. That's it. <laughs> that was I, watched it. <laughs> I watched it for that when we did the disc review. Uh, yeah. And then I watched it Sunday. So got to say, I know we don't talk about it, but this I forgot how good this movie looked. It looks, yeah. it is a beautiful 4K for such a low budget movie. You got to like, keep that in mind. <laughs> We're going to talk about a little bit low budget because I have some fun facts about this film that I, oh, I want to talk oh. about. We don't do much fun facts about films. Sometimes we sprinkle them in here and there, but this yeah. one is actually really, really interesting. I, I found out. I went, wait, I got to talk about this with Nate. Okay. But for myself, the last time was the same thing when we did the 4K review. And I agree with you. I put it on and I was like, man, the sound, because now that I'm watching it, I, I didn't have my Sono sound system when I watched it the first time. Yeah. So now watching it the second time, it was like on a 5.1, whatever. And man, when they put it on his V8 engine, and it was like, Rrr! I was like, oh my God. Now, I'm not talking about Fury Road. Fury Road sounds like you have your Hemi engine next to you. Like there is no, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your whole house is like, damn, someone put a charger in your house and just turned it on because that's different. But this one sounded so good. It looked stunning. Now, let's just get into this fun fact, okay? Okay. So, Mad Max becomes the most profitable movie ever. Oh. Fun fact, okay? okay. I, don't, I don't want people to be like, oh, yeah, right. Check this out. According to Guinness Book of Records, <laughs> Mad Max was once the most profitable movie ever. Like the upcoming um, Furiosa, right? Oh. The Mad Max is set before the apocalypse, meaning that the movie didn't need to spend much money on creating an immersive, believable wasteland setting unlike the sequels. Okay? True. Yeah. This is where it gets good, people. Listen to me here. Listen to this very clearly. Since its production cost Mad Max 1, okay? Yeah. Budget was $350,000. Right. It made an astounding $100 million. Okay. The Guinness World Record awarded the movie the title of the most profitable movie ever after its global success. Bro, that is unheard of. <laughs> yeah. I, I think, I'm sure it's now been passed. Oh, yeah. I, I, I mean, it was there for yeah. a while. Yeah. I think it was there I, I, that for a while. Because you had like Blair Witch Project. And yeah. I know uh, Paranormal Activity, those cost like, you know, 100K or whatever that they made. But 350000 Hundred million, and I don't know if that's adjusted for inflation or or what, but I mean it's a lot of money for a. It's is a low budget movie. I mean, you, but you said it though. Like even seeing, I'm scrolling through the article quick while you're talking, and it said it. It says, "Is Mad Max still the most profitable movie ever?" And it says, "Look, both Blair Witch and the Paranormal Activity, like you yeah. said, made more money with the lower budgets, but no one has compared the three movies with inflation taken into account uh-huh. since See. the Guinness World Records hasn't updated." the records, it is tough to work out whether these found footage horror hits were technically more profitable than Mad Max. See? After yeah, all, I haven't even seen that article and I said all that. No. After all, $100 million in 1979 is a lot more in 1923. Right? I mean, 2023. A lot. And yeah. the sheer size of Fiosa's movie production proves that the franchise is still a major money maker. Now, again, guys, if you want to check it out, I'll put the link somewhere, maybe in our Instagram, I'll put the link up, but you guys can check it out. It's in Screen Rant. Um, the article was published February 17, 2023. Okay? So you guys can check that out. You can read it for yourself, but I just wanted to bring down that fun fact, because I still think that's bugged out, bro. Like, it's just crazy so how George what, Miller did this. This was the 19, 100 million in 1979? Yeah. Alright, 100 million, just so you guys know, uh, while you're listening, 100 million dollars in 1979 is worth Okay, 10, 10 million then was 40 is worth 45 now. So that make it 450 million dollars now. Back then. Yeah. 
No, yeah, equivalent. So, like, if that came out now, okay, it would it would be four hundred and fifty million dollars that it made. Now, obviously, the budget is you know what three hundred fifty k. Yeah, let's just do that really quick. Three fifty k. Now, a one point five million dollar budget. So, I mean, if you make a movie for one point <laughs> five and you make four hundred and fifty, that's got to be. It might be the most profitable still. I mean, but just imagine though, right? If it's three hundred and fifty thousand dollars, and you're telling me inflation was four hundred and fifty million, that is a triple good. <laughs> duple, 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 duple. Like it's four I and mean, a half times. Yeah, I mean, I mean look, I, I know we were harping on this. I'm just saying is is it's just a it's a crazy fun fact because I this is it's really it's you don't realize how how big the movie was. Yeah. When you talk about Mad Max, I don't think people yeah. uh, people don't no. put that in their head like, oh, this was the most profitable movie of, of all time at some point. I don't think anyone would guess that. No, even if you see it now, it doesn't give you that indication of Correct. that is the most profitable because everyone has you like you said the Blair Witch on their mind. They're a paranormal. They're Halloween's. They're newest Horror movies movie. that yeah. make all this the Blumhouse. You know, blah blah blah. But yeah. in reality, George Miller's a post apocalyptic film is the most profitable. But Anyway, with wow. that said, Pretty cool. Nate, yes. what did the critics and the audience think of this film? Well, they liked it. Critics especially. <laughs> Audiences too, though. This has a critic score of 89%. So okay. almost all critics that reviewed it that get counted for Rotten Tomatoes, of course, enjoyed it. And audience score is a 70. So it is still very high. You know, genre movies, they could go either way. 70s action films could really go either way, but this is 89 and 70, so very well liked. Yeah, I mean, I'm not shocked because like I mean this is a very well made movie like rewatching it now and I'm like okay let me sit down and really pay attention it's a very well I mean editing is a little wonky but other than that it's just a flawless uh, storytelling to be honest with you all right yeah. with that said let's just get right into it okay lead character Mel Gibson as Max okay. I don't know he his last it. name Rock, but Rakatansky Max Rakatansky, Rock, Rakatansky. Yeah. yeah that's his name um, so <laughs> You, you made a good point. You made a good point there. The last time I watched this, I watched it just for the other stuff. Like I was trying yeah. to hear it, see it. I was fast forwarding. So like I didn't really sit and like watch it. I give him a four and I'll explain why. He's very quiet in this movie. He's a very quiet character. He's a family. He got his family. Also, and it, and it ties the story more. So we'll get to it when we get there. But there's not like a lot. It's not a big character. It's not like all literally this character is a he's a cop in the futuristic like police. Right. MP, whatever it is. And he's like the guy. He's like the one that is like he's the best one pretty much. Right. And he is introduced like a few minutes into the movie. He's not the very beginning. Then he comes. He puts on. He's like, got shades on. You're like, oh, this is the guy. This is Max. He's mad. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, he goes. <laughs> he does his thing. You're like, oh, shoot, he's great. And then really, you it goes around and like deals with a lot of other characters, comes back to him. He wants to retire. Okay, that's the plot. He wants to retire because he's like, this is this world is just I, I got a little baby. I got a I got a lady. I just want to spend time with them. And that's pretty much what he does for the whole middle part of the movie. As far as character stuff, I do like when his partner gets burnt because it makes yeah. him, you know, then it then he starts to show some emotion. And then what happens with his lady, then he really comes out. So it does take a while. And then and then it kind of abruptly ends. Um, you know what I mean? Like after that last part. So I still give him a four. I just think there's room to improve. So for me to give a five, I got to feel like perfect. You know, I, I don't think so. I think there is space there to do more. I, again, I haven't seen the next movie. So maybe they do. I don't know. But I still think he's a, a very good character. Four out of five. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I When I finished this movie, I was like, man, am I going to hit him with a five? And I agree. I did not. I, I, I don't think the character... The Character was developed, but I don't think it was fully developed right. in a sense that he was very one monotone. If you understand what I mean, like there was no dynamic to Mad Max in this movie. It was just a, like he was like Rambo. He was quiet and they knew he was like the top dog because they were like, Max, we need you. And he's in his car. He's like, Rum! <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God, this is so dramatic. Like they're yeah. building up this character to be like, he is the one not to mess with. He's the Judge Dredd of that movie. Like mm -hmm. you couldn't mess with him. But I I did like him though because he he was flawed which was his friend and his family that was his that was his weakness like caesar right that was his weaknesses people close to him. i yeah we were really close to him like he didn't care about nothing else just his friend the police cop and the wife and the son but i did enjoy him though i 
I did like when he was behind the wheel. And then he got into his interceptor, his black car with the V8 engine. He was like, guys, what did you get the pieces? And they're like, we got it from everywhere, Max. <laughs> and I was <laughs> We built it for yeah. you. Please don't retire. Please. Yeah. Look, look yeah. at this car. <laughs> and then you had like the chief with the with the ass cock listening to him on the radio. Fifi. His name is yeah. Fifi. Fifi. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? Oh man. But I, you know, and I and I kind of enjoyed it. And I kind of like the and I'll say this before we go to the villain. I like the progression of emotion with Matt Max in this one. Like he was quiet, he was cool, he was friendly, he was fun. They killed his friend. Oh no, actually they put him in the bed and he's like, that's not my friend. <laughs> and then all of a sudden he's mad. Yeah. And then he says, I retired, Chief. He goes, no, you take two weeks off. You're not retiring. And he goes, fine. How about you go down the dock and go get some ice cream? All of a sudden my man Toe Cutter freaking decides to run her over with a bike. And he went, no. Now really Matt is really mad. <laughs> 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 he got Super his Mad car. Max. <laughs> Ma- Super Mad Max. And I loved it. I thought it was like the elevation of, uh, of a character, like inner ambition to get angry and revenge yeah. was in this movie. It was caked in there. George Miller was like, we're caking this, this in. And I kind of liked it. I was like, you know what? That's good. But I don't think it was a perfect. I did see the others. You didn't. Yeah. But I'm not going to give my my scores for those yet. But, but you know, like it's what definitely I mean, I think what we are saying too, like he doesn't have a lot of dialogue. He doesn't talk mm-hmm. much. He got his people he's close with get hurt. He wants to get revenge. Like, but there's not a lot besides that. You don't really get to know him a whole lot more. So I think that's what yeah, we're. yeah, that's that. Yeah, he's like a typical. Oh man, he's like a comic book character where you need more stories to flush him out. So you yeah. go, oh, that is what he is about. Like this one, they giving you the origins, but like in a I, like in a, like a short. It's a short film yeah. version of it. So anyway, with that, it's four four across the board. Okay, so main villain is Toe Cutter. Toe cutter. Okay, Toe Cutter. <laughs> I yeah. hate that name, but I actually like that. I like him. I like the villain. I think he is. First of all, he looks like ah, this is going to sound mean because he's a man, but he looks like this lady. I know she kind of looks like toe cutter. To me. <laughs> so every time I see her talking, <laughs> she sees like, you. She goes, looks like this lady that I know. But anyway, I like him and he has a gang, of course. And they're just like a bunch of guys who do weird. You know, this movie's weird. It's very weird. Yeah. Very Australian. George Miller. He's an out there guy. Very talented director director and you know he he got this cast of characters that are weird to be like barking and making noises and like following people around and crawling on them and doing all this kind of wacky stuff but toe cutter always seems to have it the most together which i like i like when you have these movies where you have this gang and everyone's insane but the leader is like he's like the calm one you know what i mean yeah. but he's also the most evil one out of all of them if you do anything so i think he has some really good scenes i think he's a good counterpoint to max because max is silent quiet and he kind of is too he doesn't say a lot lot but when he talks he's like you know he 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 just says what he needs to say and doesn't say much more so charisma i don't give him the super highest score he does have charisma don't get me wrong a little bit like there's parts where he's like with the baby and all that kind of stuff and with the old lady and yeah but he's not like overly over the top but i liked him i didn't love him i gave him a four too i think i to me the hero and villain are equal in this movie like they're both really good so i gave him a four yeah i mean i agree i, I agree with you in that toe cutter and, and it's funny because like an ensemble of guys right like you said it they're they're like the warriors instead of being good there could be like a warrior gang in that movie yeah right like the biker gang from from the The australian (laughs) 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 yeah like like oh yeah like that that's what i see of them but you're right like you have to like toe cutter was really cool and especially when when the the old guy when they went to get the casket of knight rider right and he's like you know what? You could just go grab him. And he grabbed him. And he went. He said, "You remember this day, oh, yeah. Night Rider? When you look in the sky, think of Night Rider." <laughs> I like that part. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I like that. Yeah, scene. like that was, that was fun. I like when he went up to the girl and he licked her ice cream, which I was like, "That's nasty." That's well, I would have hit him in the dick too, because that was nasty too. I would have kicked him in the dick. <laughs> like yeah. you lick my what ice cream, you get, get kicked in the dick. You put his like, whole mouth on it. I was like, "Ew, what are you doing?" Yeah, like that was cool. Then you had Johnny Boy, which is the one that taunted um, Mel Gibson's uh, biker friend. You know what was his name? I just looked it up here. IDB. His name was Jim Goose. <laughs> Jim Goose. 
Oh, yes, shoot. another goose dies. <laughs> oh, man. Goose is just dead. If you're named Goose, not good you're done. for you. Bad. Yeah. So his name is Jim Goose. That's yeah. That was his name, his partner. But yeah, I agree. Everything about it was fun. I like the dude that had the chain. He threw it behind yeah. the car and he ripped his arm off. Oh, yeah. He didn't show it's it, good. but his arm his was hanging. <laughs> and my friend would yeah. like his hand back, he says. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like they were carrying that shit around. Yeah. That was kind of funny. But anyway, I thought the biker game worked very well for this film. To another two fours across the board. I want to see where you go with this oh. one. Action scenes. <laughs> this is always the hardest one. Yeah. You know, the Action Movie Guys podcast wouldn't be what it is if we didn't sometimes struggle with the action scores because it, it varies movie to movie, right? We watch a movie like, I don't know, what is for, just for an example. We watch a movie like John Wick. Perfect execution, a lot of action, a mix of different things, style. Great. And then sometimes we watch stuff that's a little more, we'll call it rough around the edges, right? It doesn't have that precision, perfect everything, but it's super fun to watch. I would put this movie in that category. Like, this is cars cars going fast, and there is, especially the opening scene, it's shot really well. I do like, oh, you know, yeah. you could tell there's another car going fast with the camera camera on the car going i love car stuff i know you love car chases more so i'll let you expand more but really well shot and then you have stunt dudes like flying you know flying off the cars and so it's a little more like a rough around the edges like i said but still executed well i still couldn't give it the five i i really wanted to i really wanted to but i'm like you know what it is very good for the time i think the budgetary constraints did limit how great it could be i i am willing to put money and again haven't seen it i'm willing to put money the road warrior has better action than this because it has a bigger budget and it has the same director who's talented so don't tell me but that is my guess without having seen the movie i just think there's a window of opportunity and i think it's gonna get bigger and better this was like small scale chaos Four. Still very good. So, uh, I hope I hope George not listening to this and getting mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to give it a four. So, okay. So this is where it comes to the action. Because I was really, t- I was like, damn. I was like, it's mostly car chase scenes. Yes. No shootouts no at all. Really. I mean, towards the end, Max gets shot in the leg. And then he the shoots the guy off the bike. The old and then the old lady with the shot, double <laughs> shotgun. With, yeah. with two knee braces to make it even funny. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> right. So I was like, how do I score this? Well, you had to go in a different style of like reviewing yes. because George Miller gave you close to 20, 15 to 20 minute beginning car chase with the yes. cops and Knight Rider. Right. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is when they introduced Mad uh, Max. And I was like, okay, this is cool. It blew up and all this crap. And I was like, oh. Then I was like, all right. The wife gets run over by the bike, which is kind of weird, right? Because when you see it in this movie, you don't see them get hit with the bike. You just elude and you already know. Yeah, you see the. Stuff you're gonna see, ball. yeah. You're gonna see in other movies. They're gonna show you some comic book version of it. Like you're gonna see some cool graphical work. And I yes. and I thought it, it looked very better that way if they shot it that way. But it is what it is. You have more chases. The ending. You got Max with his black car, the Interceptor. He's going chasing dudes down. He runs almost all of them off the bridge. So I was like, this is pretty cool. With that said, I agree with you. I, I'm I, and I'm not thinking above the sure. other movies because you've seen. So them. Yeah. yeah, I seen those. So. As of this movie, I'm giving it a four. I think that's fair. And I think, and again, the uh, the driving is really, it's outstanding for, yeah. for a $350,000 budget. Yeah. I mean, and then you had some cool parts and that were funny. Like when the eyes go bulge out when they oh, get yeah. hit. Oh, yeah. It happens that's twice. everything. Once in the beginning yeah. and then once at the end. Yeah, Knight Rider and, yeah. and two, to- uh, two cutter, a toe cutter it happens. And I was just like, okay. I was like, I mean, it is what it is. But it's, it's this is what I think. Because you, how you gave your analogy with mm-hmm. the John Wick. Yeah. The way I see it when we do these things... It's more like an action movie shimburi board. Shimcourt, what is it called? <laughs> charcuterie. The charcuterie you board. Some salami, right? a little cheese, a yes. couple so grapes. You have your, <laughs> yeah, so you have your great cheeses, right? Like the John Wick, yeah. your Die Hearts, right? Then yeah. you have your grapes. The you have your Mad Max. <laughs> you, got <a> couple of <laughs> yeah. you got the lethal weapons, yeah. right? Then you got like, and then you got stuff that people never touch, which is the salami or bologna <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> the you weird have folded meat or maybe the yes. weird looking olives. Or like yeah. <laughs> cheeses that you never you taste it once and you go, damn, this shit is nasty. But there's like yeah. thousands of that pieces. Those are like the the watchable craps. Like some people might stealth. like it, some people might not. Like stealth. Yeah, yeah. that's the gouda cheese because <laughs> it might be gouda. 
<laughs> I would call this one then yeah. with this analogy, I'd call this one like high end of the second tier of cheeses on there. You know what I mean? Okay, like, yeah. This yeah. ain't the, the expensive cheese that you're like, you no. gotta taste this. But it's the yeah. one that's right below that where it's like, this one's really good. I think you'll like it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's Try this. It. Yes. This is the, the action that's movie that show more. The, the action security cheese. board. <laughs> the action cheese. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, I get it. I get you. exactly what you're saying. Yeah, it's 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 amazing. So anyway, we give it a four across the board on that. Okay. Storyline. Man, I sound like a broken record here, but you know what? I think it is very good, not great. Or no, I should say great, not perfect. I think for a first time, you have to, you know, there's one way uh, you mentioned as far as how we have to look at the movie. And there's one way you can review this and say, well, it had no money. They did it kind of low, you know, it's low budget, nobody famous. no. And because of that, you could just, we could literally give everything a five. Be like, well, for that, it's a five, four. But I don't like to do that because I do think things can really elevate past whatever the budget is. This most does it just doesn't reach the I, I don't think it reaches the heights of a five out of five story it's still really good I gave it a four I think interesting hero he has the you know the the necessary steps to be, become the Mad Max that in the title by the end of the movie but again he's not like a hundred percent developed you have a really good strong villain but there are some parts that are kind of like like I really thought the police chief guy was weird as heck that Fifi guy and I also think there's a lot of stuff in here that's not explained that well like for example where where we really are in the world like what year is this what uh, you know when you read about it you're like yeah it's a it's like not all the way post-apocalyptic but it's like there's a crisis you know it's low on oil but they don't really delve into a lot of that stuff you know what I mean? And maybe it's because of the budget. And maybe it's just because these are kind of like early on, you know, in their filmmaking career. And so whatever the case, I still think it's good. But I still had questions like, well, I don't really understand everything that's going on. But I, I think you get enough. You get the gist. You're you're there with the characters and you're there for the action. So I still give it a four. I think it's a very good storyline. But I think, again, it could have been even better. So I'll leave that one point for the other version that could have been. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking right now while you were talking and all it says is near future. That is all they give you. They don't give you <laughs> it's kind of like, vague. Yeah, they don't give you no. It's like, okay, somewhere in time this yeah. is where it takes place. I mean, yeah, I agree with you. There's some plot holes here and there. I mean, there's a lot of things that you like, you're shaking your head like, why did she continue running down a road where there's nothing to run at? Like, stuff like that line. didn't make sense. Yeah, it just, it didn't make sense to me in a lot of stuff. But in all, it's a very fun story. Dep and then I'll say this very lightly. Depending on what type of person that watched is these type of movies because some people might think it's boring and uh, I can see that my wife thinks the first one is boring she was like she goes I can't and I was like hey, it is what it is I enjoy yeah, it I could see it and yeah it's a very for some people it's a very boring story it's not this like action action balls to the wall bullets it's not very flying dramatic either it's like, not a lot it's, yeah. it's just a storytelling of a guy as a police officer that gets revenge because they killed his wife and best friend that is pretty much it I mean in a nutshell that's the movie in a near future and yeah. my thing I'm laughing at. It goes, I, I don't know if you laughed at this, because I, I bet you did. Every time they show the Hall of Justice, they play like this, this cartoon. That, dun, 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 and then all of a sudden, yeah. it's like dirty papers everywhere on the yeah, floor. It looks, it looks like a dump. Like <laughs> <laughs> Everything looks like a dump in this movie. It looked like crap. I was yeah. like, uh, and it was like four police officers in a big ass building. And That's I was all like, there is left. Yeah, nobody wants to be cops. No. So, yeah. it like stuff like that, to me, it was like, they didn't explain that either. Like, where is all the people? Like, why does this thing look like this? Like, and then it's just, there's a and lot of stuff. go to that town. It looks like an old West town. Remember with the yeah. casket? Like, yeah. now we're in a Western. I mean, the whole thing has a Western vibe. But it literally looks like one of those old West towns where the guy's making the coffin on the side of the road. <laughs> He's, like, <laughs> building it. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, and also, and I do understand the budget constraints. 350000 So they couldn't not get mon tons of extras if that's yeah. what they were going for. But, look, it is it, what it is. I did enjoy the story. I thought it was a very fun story. I like the revenge aspect. You're right. It's a very Western story. If you really put horses and saloons again in this story yeah. you might get a great cowboy movie to be honest with you because Mel Gibson's character Mad Max is a western character he's a Clint Eastwood type character 100% he doesn't talk and when you mess with him he fires back so again I thought that was great but I don't think it's a perfect either I'm gonna give it a four also on storyline okay overall what's your overall overall I give this a four I think it's a great yeah. movie um, I discovered it later in life like I said I did not watch this when I was younger at all as a matter of fact the first Mad Max movie I ever saw was Fury Road. So I saw that oh, first. Wow. 
yeah, I saw this after. And look, I still haven't watched two or three yet. So this series is not, I can't say it's a favorite, although I can say the two movies I've seen, I really, really like. So I think this is a great start. You know, it doesn't, and the, the cool thing about the movie is if they never made sequels, it's still a really good movie. Like it's yeah. just a really good, small, low budget action Western it's a Western. If you, like that point you made, and, and I think I said it on one of the other movies, any movie where you just take out whatever vehicle they're on, if they were on horses and you think it's a Western, it's pretty much a Western. So I think this is a great movie. Uh, Mad Max, I mean, I, I should say Mel Gibson, performance wise, uh, not his best. You know what I mean? Like he's young still, young actor. He looks the part, but he, again, he doesn't have a ton to do. So I, you know, knowing the kind of star he would become later, I'm, I'm interested to see the journey of how his performances change over time. So I'm actually looking forward to next week a lot um, and even Thunderdome again I haven't seen it but yeah I give it a four I think it's a really great movie yeah in, in terms of this film I agree I gave it a four I liked it a lot I like saw this movie I'm 40 now I gotta say like nine or eight, eight oh, or even maybe seven it has to be like yeah like early 90s ish mm. like just going through the TV and I was like oh what is this and I was like watched it but I will say this though I was more gravitated and it's been a while since I seen it but I was more gravitated to part two Ro uh, Road Warrior. and But I will say this because I don't want to spoil nothing for you. The other two sequels, like Thunderdome and Road Warrior, very 80s. Like, yeah, I'll, very post-apocalyptic. I've very, seen like yeah, images very, of Very, very post-apocalyptic. Yeah. Like you see they got more budget, but it's yeah. very 80s. Like that's what I mean. Like you're going to be like, oh, okay, I see what Alex means in terms of yeah. it's a very 80s. Like this does not feel 70s. This feels like a post-apocalyptic story, like yeah. Blade Runner, right? Like when you watch Blade Runner, it doesn't feel like it was filming that era. It looked like it was filming anything because the story was so good. Yeah, it doesn't feel super wise. 80s. You're right. No, it don't. Like, that's what this movie felt like. It didn't feel 70s. I, I felt like, okay, this could have came out in 81, 82, maybe. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, anyway, that's what I wanted to say. But, I overall, I think this is a fun, great film for those of you that enjoy this type of film. I am, uh, other you, maybe not, you might not like it, but it's okay because there's three other sequels that came out that you might enjoy over the first. So, it's okay with that. But this laid down the foundation work for my man, Mad Max. All right, Nate, total points. Uh, 20 out of 25. A perfect four, right? You had the mm. perfect score, which is a 25 out of 25. This is the perfect four. Uh, for all fours, I think if you have a movie, to me, anything when we score our movies, anything between 20 and 25, it's a high recommendation. You know what I mean? Like, I would really recommend this if you have never seen it, or like me and you're older. I mean, I'm not that old. If you're in your 30s, 20s, you never seen it, <laughs> watch it. It's very good. I think you will enjoy it. So yeah, 20. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I give it a four, uh, four across the board, too. I have, the, I have a four of a kind on this one so I, it's 20 also i enjoyed it I, I thought it was really good and i agree with everything you said other than that what's coming up next on the podcast all right so <clears throat> next episode we will be continuing with our remake month with a movie called assault on precinct 13 and we're going to be doing that one and then next week we start road warrior so we're going to the sequel uh, not just you Everyone has told me this one is like the, yeah. the favorite one, right? So it, it, to me, when I talk to people who like these movies, it's either they love Fury Road the most or Road Warrior. Like those are the ones that come up the most, I should say. I'm sure yeah. Mad Max number one and even Thunderdome probably has fans that love it the most because every series has that. But so I'm, I'm very excited. So we got a little Salt on Precinct 13 next episode and then next week, Road Warrior. All right, guys. So there you have it. If you guys want to follow us in our social media accounts, please follow Nate over on Instagram at Netflix Reviews. Check out the podcast with him and his friends called Netflix Moo Reviews. Every other Monday, Nate is live on Instagram at his Netflix Reviews account. At 9 p.m. Eastern, he joined forces again with his friends that he did, he did the podcast with. They talk movies. They talk about all the new releases that they saw. Maybe movie news. You guys could throw in some questions. They'll answer it to again every other mo Monday when we're not live. They're live on his Instagram, Netflix Reviews on Instagram. Other than that, action movie guys, head over to Geeks and Flicks on Instagram. And then, of course, our official website at www geeksandflicks.com. Other than that, I'm your host, Alex Figueroa. My co-host is Nate from Netflix Reviews. Be awesome to each other and geek out. Geek out.